We got some Bronco news with an exclusive leak not reported anywhere else. A trio of Hellcat vehicles, brand new, and a Tesla, a valet, and a dash cam. You don't want to miss this. FCA just dropped three brand new vehicles. We've got the Durango Hellcat, the Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye, and a Challenger SRT Superstock. That is a mouthful. We're going to cover each one of them. These vehicles are really where Dodge shines and Ford has nothing else competitive at all, not even in the pipeline as far as I understand it. So the Durango Hellcat, you know, you're going to the country club and you don't really want to show up in a Porsche because it's just too ostentatious. So instead you show up in the SUV with 710 horsepower, 645 pound feet of torque out of your 6.2 liter supercharged V8. So yes, FCA has finally stuffed the Hellcat motor into a Durango. Now your transmission option is an eight speed automatic. It's the same one that is used in the Hellcat. It's very stout, it can handle a lot of power and it really does shift very quickly. To get all this power down to the ground, of course you want all wheel drive so you can put it down. Zero to 60, they're claiming in three and a half seconds, quarter mile of 11.5. And when you're just driving your soccer team over to the next game, it's actually got three rows, so you can terrify everybody in your vehicle. Or maybe you just want to tow your race car. Well, the towing capacity, get this, 8,700 pounds. That is absolutely best in class, 8,700 pounds. You could tow two race cars with that. It is mega. Now, when you're towing or you're cruising up the canyons with your little munchkins in the back seat, you definitely want to be able to stop. So this has six piston Brembo brakes all the way around 15.75 inch rotors. And if you want it, you have to get it now because it is a 2021 model run only. It is a one year run and they're going to make just 2000 of these. So if you want one, I definitely suggest you go put in your reservation at your dealer. My understanding is the reason I'm not going to make it for past 2021 is due to some sort of CO2 emissions regulation. It also has an upgraded performance interior. So this thing is, this is sort of the ultimate three row SUV. So if just north of 700 horsepower isn't good enough for you, how about 797. That is available in the Charger Hellcat Red Eye. Okay, quarter mile, 10.6, 129 miles an hour. It is rear wheel drive only, so you can do those sweet, sweet burnouts in the Walmart parking lot. You know they're gonna love that. You want big tires? 305 width tires all the way around? Check. You want the biggest production supercharger? 2.7 liters for the supercharger? Check. You want more boost? Well, it's been increased from 11.6 to 14.5. Check. Two dual stage fuel pumps that can drain the tank in 11 minutes at full throttle. That is some terrible gas mileage, but apparently it does get like over 20 on the highway. It has adaptive dampers all the way around and line lock. And you want a wide body? Check. Four doors? Check. 10 points on your driver's license the first day you get it? Check. So this is one quick charger. But a 797 horsepower is, you know, just not enough for you. How about 807 and 707 pounds feet of torque on pump gas? That is in the new Challenger SRT Superstock. Interestingly enough, this is a 2020 model. They're saying summer availability, but it sounds like they're going to be available at dealers in the fall. So it's kind of odd that it's a 2020 model, but eight speed automatic. You want bigger tires than 305s? How about 315 all the way around and a 10.5 quarter mile at 131 miles an hour? Yeah, 0 to 60, 3.25. And just to prove that this is really a drag car, it has drag radials on it, Nitto NT05R. It's also got line lock and it's got launch control. This is pretty much the ultimate drag car that a manufacturer in the US is making right now. No word on pricing just yet, but you can expect these to be priced at the Hellcat level of pricing. Those numbers tend to start with a seven or an eight. 
So I gotta be honest with you, Dodge, FCA is absolutely bringing it with these cars right now. They're bringing out all these insane cars with cool names too. It's not like BMW with X3, X4 and all these German numbers. These are cars with really cool names. They're really fast. These are enthusiast vehicles. They're relatively low production. So if you want something like this, I feel like this is sort of the end of an era with the incoming global fuel economy and emission standards and so forth. So. Go get these now. And next up, we're gonna talk about why you're here, and that's the Bronco. I've got some information on the Bronco Raptor in a minute, so just stick around for that. But as you know, the reveal was moved from July 9th, which is OJ's birthday, to July 13th, which is not OJ's birthday, and I think Ford was estimating they're gonna get a little bit too much coverage on the OJ birthday thing and not enough on the Bronco, so they moved it around. How many times are you gonna move around the reveal, Ford? Well, hopefully they're gonna stick to the 13th, and I think they are because they are gonna be broadcasting it live on the 13th at 5 p.m. Eastern on ABC, ESPN, and National Geographic. Press release says they're gonna show three three-minute films shown during the first commercial break. I don't know if that's three separate films on each of the networks, not quite clear in that, but they're gonna be available uh, a day afterwards online as well. And so for this part of the video, we're discussing the body on frame Bronco, the uh, more off-road version. So finally, we're getting some official photos from Ford, even though they say they're CGI renderings, who knows? Very retro styling as we expected, and I think it's very clear that they were taking their inspiration from the original 60s Bronco. Kudos to Ford for doing that, because that is where it all started, and I think really the most iconic, interesting styling. We've got some pretty big fender flares, front and back. What we also got here in this grid photo is, I can see some beadlock wheels in a really cool yellow color. These tires are actually quite big too. I'm guessing about a 315-ish, maybe 7017. So this is equating to like a 34, 35 inch tire in my estimation, that's pretty big. And it looks, I'm guessing here, this is just speculation, but I think they're gonna be, you're gonna be able to put on bigger tires than you are in the Wrangler. So they can sort of claim bragging rights for the ability to get on the biggest set of rubber without uh, doing any kind of lift kit. What's also confirmed here too in these photos is we are getting removable doors, 100%. We're getting removable roof panels, as you can see here too. And I think expect uh, three separate options. Uh, there's gonna be a multi-panel roof situation with probably two uh, panels on the front and a couple more in the back a soft top and a hard top option. Again, this is a little bit speculation, but based on all the information that we have, I think that's pretty solid. This is also similar to, to Jeep. The Wrangler is sort of the main target of the Bronco. I think everybody can agree with that. Remember when the Tesla Cybertruck was announced and everybody went crazy because you could put a reservation in for $100? Well, Ford think that's a good idea too, and so they are gonna also give you the ability to Place your order for 100 bucks starting at the launch on 8 p.m. on the 13th. Now that just gives you a reservation. At some point you'll be able to convert that reservation into an actual order that's gonna be a little bit later in the year. So previously I reported exclusively that the 3.5 liter engine, the EcoBoost from the F-150 is not going to fit into the Bronco. Well, guess what? Nothing has changed with that. And that also means that the V8, the Coyote V8, the five liter, it doesn't fit either, and there's a lot of people that are demanding it, well, I suggest you go somewhere else, which is actually nowhere because no one's making a V8 in these vehicles nowadays. That's just sort of the way things go, but these new engines do make a heck of a lot of torque. So here we go. Let's talk about the Raptor version of the Bronco. There's not going to be a Raptor version, at least according to a source that I have. The good news is there will be a performance version and it's going to be called the Warthog. So remember that name that was kind of floating around for a little while? I think there's a patent on it, on that name. People were thinking it's some sort of trim level. Well, I think it is a trim level. It looks like it's going to be the performance version. So even though it's not gonna be called Raptor, we're still gonna get a performance version and Ford Performance is working on it. This comes from a source who is very familiar with the powertrains in the new Bronco and also some other Ford vehicles. I just wanted to let you know that I tried to confirm this with a second source and I could not get confirmation on this name. It is possible that Warthog refers to a future pickup truck in 2022 that is coming down the line that could be based around the Raptor. So 
take that as you will. So this is not going to be available at launch, but apparently it's gonna be available as a 2022 model. So we're looking at about eight, nine, 10 months afterwards because we're sort of getting a late launch for the 2021. It's gonna have upgraded suspension and my sources tell me that the horsepower target is gonna be around 400. Now, of course, we have a little ways to go before we get to 2022. So this information can change, but this is just the information that I have right now that's current Again, subject to change. And remember, all of this, all of this is a little bit rumor. This is inside sources. So nothing is confirmed until so Ford tells us it's confirmed. So if Ford really brings us 400 horsepower, that is way, way more than what you get in the Wrangler right now. The top engine horsepower wise is 285 horsepower. Now they do have the Eco Diesel with 442 pound-feet of torque. I just tested that. It's up here. It's actually an amazing engine but if Ford can bring something like that to the table, it's gonna blow the Wrangler out of the water from the engine standpoint. I have inquired about a diesel engine in the Ford and it doesn't look like we're gonna get that at launch, maybe never, hard to say, that's not apparently on the table right now. What does seem most likely is the 2.7 liter EcoBoost and the 2.3 liter EcoBoost as an entry level seems to be pretty likely too. So I would say definitely expect the 2.7. Now in the future, we're looking for this Warthog to have a three liter version of the engine that is currently available in the Lincoln Aviator. I also understand there is a hybrid coming, but probably not at launch. It's a little bit unclear. Haven't been able to confirm that, but I expect to see a hybrid at some point pretty soon in the life cycle. So in this image, this is an official Ford image. We got a two-door version, a four-door version, and the Sport. Now the Sport is uh, unibody based. It is completely different. It's a completely different chassis than that. It's much more city focused. Now it's more like the Jeep Renegade or the Jeep Compass. It's much more of a city focused vehicle. What's really cool with this two door is that we can now see it completely open with the doors off and the top off. So you can go sand duning, whatever you call that and you know have a good old time in the sand in the dirt in the mud whatever get it as dirty as you want with everything off and i've also previously reported and i think some other outlets too have that there will be a way to store the doors in the back of the vehicle obviously that's going to limit space uh, i'm guessing that there's going to be a four door and a two door version of i'm going to call it a toaster where you can put the doors in too so that's kind of interesting and what's really cool is that of course on the jeep you have these external hinges and on the Bronco, I don't see any external hinges at all. So this is kind of a new uh, development, uh, pretty interesting. It's definitely a good way to differentiate from Jeep. Now, in terms of differentials, there's no real confirmation on this, exactly what we're gonna get, but I know that TFL Now got some photographs. We're certainly gonna get some locking differentials. They have to do that to compete with the Wrangler. I'm sure we're gonna get a front and a rear locking diff, are we gonna get a center one? Seems very likely as well, because again, that is what's available on the Jeep side. So pricing, where is that gonna start? I've seen numbers all over the place, but my best source tells me that we're gonna see a starting price of the two-door base at just a little bit south, a few hundred dollars south of $30,000. That makes a lot of sense, because that is where the Jeep is. And I keep mentioning the Jeep because that is the main target for this. Almost certainly we're gonna get a seven speed manual transmission with some type of crawl gear. That's pretty interesting. And in terms of the automatic, it looks like we're gonna get a 10 speed automatic as well. I'm assuming that's gonna be an option so you can pay a little bit more for the automatic and Ford can charge you a little bit more for that. So if you're one of those people that absolutely needs a solid front axle, none of these vehicles except the Wrangler at least new ones are the right choice for you. Definitely go ahead and get yourself a Wrangler. And for all the folks that are saying, hey, there's gonna be a dealer option where you can swap out the independent front suspension for a solid axle. I don't know what you folks are smoking over there, but that's sort of not how engineering works. The front suspension system and the transmission of the driveline are absolutely integral to the whole design of the vehicle. It's not something where you can just swap out the independent front suspension easily for a solid front axle. I highly, highly doubt that Ford is gonna make that an option. I would be absolutely shocked if they do. I'm sure in the aftermarket that's gonna be available, but I mean, 
let, let's get real, guys. That's sort of not how engineering works. This is a mass production vehicle. Can you imagine the complexity and all the extra parts they'd have to do and all the things that would break if this was an option? It's just not going to happen. If you want a solid front axle, this is not the vehicle for you. Next up, I've got a crazy story about a Tesla a valet who apparently got fired and some very interesting driving that was caught on dash cam. So this story comes to us from Texas around Austin. So on Reddit, there's a user called King Baby and she went to a resort with her boyfriend and after work, apparently a long week of work, and they took the boyfriend's Model S. So when they got to the resort, the boyfriend left it with the valet. And this is where things get fun. So this seems pretty normal, right? You go to a resort or you live in a big city, you have to valet your car. That's kind of the only choice. And you know, big empty parking lot. Hmm, what could go wrong? So, oh, let's just go park the car. Oh, look, it's Bambi. I mean, what can go wrong? You've got Bambi in the video. I mean, it's so cute. Nothing can really go wrong when you got Bambi in your video, right? So there's more animals in this video, kind of. You've probably heard of ludicrous mode, which is the super quick launch mode that the Tesla has. So they have something called cheetah launch mode, which is even faster. And what it does is it heats up the batteries before you launch it. So I'm supposing, I'm presuming that this valet had enough time to sort of heat up the batteries. He put it in cheetah launch mode and let's take a look. Uh, this parking lot isn't entirely straight. Uh-oh, uh-oh. So my first thought is you've just crashed this guy's Tesla over a wall, but hey, why stop? That, that's, that's not important to stop and check the damage, is it? But I got a little bit more. Here's another angle from the door cam. And if you're wondering what the carnage looks like, ask and you shall receive. So what's the final outcome of this? Well, the valet was fired, of course, and the owner intends to sue the resort. Big surprise. There's a couple of videos on screen right now. Pick one. My name is Eric. Please subscribe if you want more news like this, and I will see you in the next video. And happy fourth weekend, everybody.